What's going on guys and welcome along to another video. I'm over at DSR and today I'm going to be taking you through my vlogging kit that I use every single time I'm out on the bike. Whether that be like today where I'm just out on the GSA or whether I'm doing a review, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. It goes in the bag and it comes with me. I thought I'd get the GSA out today because this is the first time this bike has been out in 2024. It's around the 12th of January at the minute. I've only been out on one other bike and that was a review on the ZX4 Double R. So I thought, you know what? Let's stretch the old girl's legs. I mean, it was proven that it needed it because I had to jump it. And don't worry, I do have the jump starter with me just in case. If you are having the same issues as me with the battery, I've actually done a video on the jump starter that I've personally bought. That is on the channel, check out top right hand corner now if you want to go uh, watch that. And if not, it will be in the description box below so you can watch it after. I will be talking about what kit I've got. I thought I'd just go and find somewhere nice and quiet. I know there's a bench in some woods up here. So that's where we're going to go. been that long since I've done a wheelie on this I forgot how to turn the, <laughs> the traction control off I forgot you need it off there we go nice little spot now just put this one over here then this is everything I would take on a full test ride review I will go for everything on the table and tell you what I may leave behind depending on uh, what I've got planned for that ride kicking us off then is where the phone is in your pocket me I've got the iPhone 13 Pro and I'm really happy with its performance so at the minute it's not going anywhere but honestly whatever you've got in your pocket is probably more than enough to kind of get you started Next up then is something I use every time I'm off the bike when I'm walking around it and that is a Manfrotto kind of mini handheld tripod with just a cheap uh, phone holder and that's how it looks. Honestly, nine times out of ten that you see me doing any form of off the bike uh, footage, it's with, with this. The reason I start with that is because I'm using it as my b-roll camera, but obviously the first and most important part of any motorcycle vlogging is you've got your bike is for me it's going to be the helmet to start with so i have the hjc rafa 70 carbon i've done a lot of research into this helmet to kind of find a helmet that was a to my liking that i like the styling of it but b was quiet because that is going to aid in the performance of the lapel mic when you're making your videos do some research find a helmet that's good for you but if not just use the helmet you've got check out what the audio sounds like it's probably one of the easier options to get better audio later on down the line if you want to improve it the next important part then is the footage i personally have a gopro 10 on the front of my helmet i used to use a gopro 9 but when zoe started joining me gave her the 9 and i sacrificed myself and my camera and then bought the 10. with the 10 that is fitted to the helmet right now i also use the gopro media mod and to capture all the audio some of the older gopro 7 and back they have an external media mod um, but yeah eight forwards i believe maybe nine forwards uh, has a housing that goes around the gopro as the media mod from there the audio itself audio is 70 percent of any video good audio is king i've got a purple panda mic on the inside uh, and i've just got a wire coming out underneath the cheek pad straight into the media mod itself and lastly holding the camera in place is a chin mount mount chin mount mount i've also then sue grooved around the edge just to make it uh, properly secure because sometimes the amount of 3m tape that's actually in contact with the helmet can leave a little bit to desire moving on then obviously as i said i did have a nine that I used to use as my primary gopro on the helmet now it's a secondary camera and what i use this mainly for is the pov shot from the handlebar that leads me nicely onto the clamps that i use for it i've got a claw clamp with a two inch extension arm uh, very similar to ram mount but i think this is just a, a cheap knockoff and then i've got a screw joint on the top camera then just sits on there facing me 
nice and easy. If you want to extend the camera, uh, I've got a six inch extension rod, but I mainly use this for a different camera that we're gonna come on to later on. I say later on, I mean now. So I've got the Insta X3, used to have the X1, had endless problems, got rid of it, got the X3. I've had absolutely zero dramas. The only drama that this camera had is me. Uh, that's because I scratched it three or four times and then I think it was on the fourth time I actually ended up ripping off one of the lenses and that was kind of user error but kind of wasn't. So where I mounted it, it was on the right hand side of the bike and obviously the bike goes over but instead of using the fixed extension arm I had the selfie stick so it went from a two foot extension and the actually selfie stick in my eyes failed and extended and then so I went from two foot to six foot. So when I was going around, it was just dragging on every single corner until the lens come off. So that's the broken one. So what I've then done, went out and bought myself another one. But this time I added on the lens guard protectors just to kind of help the mitigate any lens scratches. I can tell a slight difference in the quality of footage with the lens guard on. There are videos out there that say there isn't any difference. For me, there is. Uh, actually, just looking at this lens guard, the lens guard itself looks scratched as well. That's good because these only cost a couple of quid so I can get rid of that, get another lens guard and put it on. Otherwise that scratch would have been on the lens itself. But yeah, highly recommend getting yourself a 360 camera. Ideal for mounting it all around the bike, getting those different types of shots. I've actually done a video on where to mount your 360 camera. So check that out top right hand corner. For external audio then I use this, which is the Hollyland Lark M1 mic. You do get two uh, mics with it and then the main unit using it right now. Really good, I think this one cost me about 80 pounds. I will put the prices of everything on the screen, but also there's a link in the description box below, Kitco, go to that and then everything will be on there. It's affiliate marketing, you don't pay anything, but I'll get a little kickback from Amazon. It's good for the price range. Newer have released a better version for only 20 to 40 pound more. Personally, if I was gonna buy a cheaper mic again, I would buy the newer one. And then if I was going all spenny, I'd look at the uh, Rode Professional set, but they're about 400 pounds. The good thing with this is A, this is a carry case, but also it's a charging case. So when it's uh, when I'm done using it, I put it back in and it starts charging it. And lastly, the other good thing with this is there's different connectors, which means you can connect your iPhone or Samsung to the unit, doesn't matter what you've got. Um, but also it connects straight to the DSLR, which I am using right now. Talking on a DSLR, I have the ZV-E10 right now. Been using it since I've started. Got a few different lenses for it right now. This is the Tamron 28 to 75 telephoto. It's what I use for all my thumbnail uh, pictures. And then I've got a 16 mm lens on the camera right now for any form of talking like this. Uh, I use this a lot in the office as well. Obviously, you don't need to spend the extra money on DSLR cameras and lenses and everything else that goes with that. You can just use your phone, but uh, when you're editing and you want to crop in, the phone can uh, lose quality because of the megapixels. So I always prefer taking the thumbnail with the proper camera. An accessory that you will always need with your GoPro is A, extra batteries. I've got the uh, a few of the aftermarket ones. I've also got some of the white extreme ones from GoPro. They claim to get extra battery length. Whether they do or not, I don't know. But I've also got a telesyn carry case so a couple of batteries come with them um, but again it's a carry case but i can charge the batteries with this whilst i'm riding so again very important to think about kind of battery usage when you're out riding yet yeah, you're going to stop and use it but then how are you going to charge it when you're not using it that then brings me nicely onto my 20,000 milliamp power pack it's got two outputs and it's great it means i can charge whatever i want whilst i'm riding and whenever I get to my destination, everything's good to go. In the bag, I'll always carry a iPhone cable and a USB-C cable. C because everything else charges on the C, but also mainly the iPhone. So if I'm using it for a lot of um, sat nav or for filming, I can then charge that when I'm out on a bike that isn't mine and doesn't have any form of power points. Another accessory for the GoPro is gonna be the ND filters. At the minute, overcast, cloudy, I've taken the ND filter off. But in the summer, when it's bright blue sky, ND4 or ND8, I'll whack it on. It sounds simple, but a screwdriver, because hand tightening the 
uh, mount for the GoPro onto the chin mount. They never go tight enough, so you need a screwdriver. The GoPro does let me down every now and then. Two main reasons. One, I'll put a fresh battery in, press record, and it will tell me that the battery's dead. It's not. That's annoying, but it lets me know straight away. The second way it lets me down, which really frustrates me, is the audio. Sometimes I'll do a full recording day, get back, and half the footage doesn't have audio, even though the media mod was fitted correctly, the lapel mic was in, everything was good to go, and it just didn't record. So to mitigate that, I've got this, the Tascam DR05X external recorder. I actually have a second lapel mic in the helmet. I plug it into this. This then sits into my jacket pocket and it's just a backup audio. It saved my bacon a few times from when the GoPro audio didn't record and I've managed to use this to overlay onto the footage to give me audio still. So I haven't had to go back and record the same bike for the same review, which I've had to do a few times before I got this. And lastly, it's something that doesn't come out with me on every single ride, but it is a drone. Obviously, everyone knows about drones and the type of footage you can get, absolutely phenomenal, but it's very time consuming to get it out, set it up, get the shot, especially if you're by yourself, it's a right pain in the backside. So this could take half hour to get some form of shot and you might only use five to 10 seconds of the footage. This one is the DJI Mini 2. Me personally, I don't use it a whole bunch at the minute, but I'll think about what type of bike I'm going and where I'm going and what type of shots I want to get to whether I'll take this with me. In the future, I'm gonna upgrade this to at least the Mini 4 Pro so I can get the uh, autonomous follow me capability so I can just whack it in the air, target myself, and then it will just follow me because me and Zoe, our piloting skills are extremely poor and we've crashed this drone a fair few times. Obviously, I said about the camera, here it is with the 16 mil lens and that's the Hollyland main unit plugged straight into the side. This is what it looks like. I think it's quite nice and neat and it's not too big and cumbersome. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to get yourself is a tripod. Now this one isn't the biggest and it's not the most sturdy. In heavy winds, it is gonna wobble so you might wanna weight it down or find somewhere not so windy to use it. But today, no wind whatsoever, it's perfect. It's nice, small, light, compact, fits in the pannier perfectly. A perfect example of why I carry the power pack with me. For you, this is a medium length video, not too long. For me, I've actually already recorded this once today, about an hour ago, but then I realized when I finished that it wasn't focused on me. It was just <laughs> unfocused footage. So I've had to record it all over again. So having something to charge my phone, because it's about to die, is ideal. Well guys, that is a full breakdown of all the vlogging kit that I use, apart from the drone, near enough every single time I'm out on the bike. If you want me to do any other videos, let me know in the comments box below, whether that be the settings on the GoPro or the ZV-E10, wherever you want, let me know. Hit me up, let me know what you guys want to see, because in the day, I'm making these videos for you, not necessarily for me. So having your input helps me grow and develop the channel and keeps you guys interested. I'm getting cold, I'm gonna finish my monster and uh, get on the road, get back home, start editing this video. If you found it useful, give us a like. More importantly, subscribe to the channel because it helps us grow. Like I said, we're at 5,000 subs, which is more people than I'll ever know. But for 2024, I wanna to get to 10,000 subs. So 84% of you watching this video are not subscribers. So just subscribe, it means nothing to you. Just push on one little button, help a brother out. Until the next one, ride safe.